Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this tutorial, we're going to look at what you need to install to get started with this tutorial. So I'm in Google here, and for reasons that I don't fully understand, I've got a Hungarian version of Google. But um, the first thing we need to install is the MySQL community server. So this is a free database which you can install and uh, which will, will sort of enable you to create tables and store data in there and do all kinds of things like that. So if you search for the MySQL community server, just go to the download link and most of the time, all you have to do is select your operating system, download the right installer and just run it like any normal installation program. Let's just click this download link. They do have this slightly sneaky thing where they try to get you to create an account. But um, at the moment, at least, they also give you this no thanks, just start my download option here. So you can do that. So download the version for your operating system and install it. They have versions for, uh, for Linux, for Windows. I'm using Mac, but you can install it on more or less any reasonable desktop computer. If the installation program asks you to um, enter a password for your root user, which is, as we'll see later on, this is the user that you'll be connecting as initially, it's really important that you, that you remember the password that you entered. It's very important, but it might just not ask you. This installation program used to be a bit flaky, and a long time ago there didn't even used to be a program. But now, usually, um, the installers for the various platforms, they pretty much work out the box. If you do run into any problems, then, um, well, make sure you are running the installer and not a zip download. And uh, don't be afraid to Google for further information if you have to. I can't show you the installation for your platform because it depends on your platform and it even depends on the version of MySQL and the, and the version of the installer. But if you run into any problems, don't be afraid to Google for that, like um, can't install MySQL Windows 7 or whatever. And if any error messages come up, don't be afraid to copy those and, or just type them out, paste them into Google, do a search and see what comes up there, because probably other people have encountered your problem as well, if you have a problem. If you really get stuck with this, you can just search for online MySQL database something like that and you will find versions that you can use on the internet and some of these are just meant for learning MySQL and others require you to create a account and uh, maybe uh, create a database with a few clicks and possibly even pay but you can find various free versions on here that you can use to practice your SQL if you really run into problems. Now in this tutorial we'll, we'll focus on using the MySQL Workbench, which is another free tool. So you also need to install that for your system. Search for MySQL Workbench and go to that and install that. Uh, so again, all the same things apply. It's probably going to install pretty smoothly. If you run into any problems, don't be afraid to Google. If you, um, if you want to use an online MySQL database instead, should be no problem because we, we won't be getting too tied up with the workbench here. I'm going to focus on learning um, MySQL of the sort that you'd also type on a command line if you wanted to. But this is a really handy tool to have because it just makes it much easier and nicer to work with the MySQL database. When you've installed it, uh, you, you will, well, you'll probably have a choice between running the MySQL server when, you, when your operating system starts up, when your computer starts, which is the easiest option. That's going to run your actual database itself when it starts. And then you can start the MySQL Workbench to connect to it. Or you can opt to start it via some kind of tool that they supply you with. So, for example, in my Mac here, if I go to my Mac System Preferences, I've got this MySQL Administration tool in there. So I'm going to, now that I've installed this, I've installed MySQL, I can click Start MySQL Server and I've just got to enter my operating system password to start that. Usually, again, it will start up pretty smoothly. You might also want to restart your computer if you have any problems. And then when you've done that, you should be able to run the MySQL Workbench. Let's try to run that. 
and you should be able to open a connection. So this is how it looks at the moment. It does change from version to version, but you should be able to figure out how to create a new connection. I've created one already here, but I'll create a new one. Click the plus sign by MySQL Connections. This, this could be slightly different in your version. And it's already pre-filled in the details here. I didn't set a password. My username is root, which is the default. This host name means basically just the computer where the MySQL server, the database itself, is running. And this 3306 is the default port for MySQL. So then I can click Test Connection, and it says successfully made the MySQL connection. So you want to get to that point where you can see that your MySQL workbench can successfully connect to your server. Don't forget, you might have to start your server via your control panel or um, map preferences or whatever you're using. If you didn't select to have it start when you start your computer, when you installed it. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. Good luck with that. Um, as I say, if you run into any problems, Google it. And as a last resort, you can use just an online MySQL database to follow this tutorial. And in the next tutorial, we'll look at actually uh, setting up a connection and issuing commands. So until next time, happy coding.